You're selling roofs. You have an appointment. What would you do? What would be different if you had a step-by-step -step formula for both storm and retail? So you knew exactly what to do, what to say, when to do it from start to finish. I'm talking the minute you say your first hello to a customer all the way to leaving with that sign deal and them excited to give you that five-star review. How would that go? Pretty darn well, I suppose, huh? Hey, my name is Adam Benzman, The Roof Strategist, and I'm about to teach you my car park closing formula that I have exclusively presented only to my one-on-one -on -one clients. I've worked years on distilling these complex ideas and processes of closing into a very simple, very powerful formula for both storm and retail. And if you want more of this, I did release this program today. You can get a discount on it. There's a link in the description, but let's jump in to the car park closing formula. Now, before we get started, who needs this? Who needs this formula? If you've ever run a sales appointment and had a customer totally derail you, you know the type, the one that does this and just drills you with questions, knocks you on your heels, you're on the defensive, like fielding blows, and then they say, okay, great, thanks for coming out, we'll let you know what we decide. If that's happened, you need this. How about this? Sales presentation, what you felt went great but you didn't get the deal and it's happening over and over again. Or what about this? You do a presentation and you hear, I have to think about it and then you're ghosted, all right? Or if this is you, whether you're new or seasoned, you show up, you're not really doing the same thing each time and you're just trying your hardest and giving good service without an actual format, without intention, without clarity, without purpose, without specific focus. If that's you, you need a formula to follow. Before I go into this, which in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down what each of these means to link it together, all right? Now, I do not believe in word for word scripts for many reasons, and I'm gonna explain those here. Number one, a word for word script is impossible to memorize. The language I use is different than the language you use. It's different than how they speak in Pennsylvania than they do in Atlanta, Georgia. Everyone handles things differently. You need concepts to use. Number two, scripts make you sound like a freaking robot. I am reading a script. No one likes that. And three, they often feel pushy, but the most important reason I've saved for last, and that's reason number four. A sales presentation must be customized to the customer. I'm gonna repeat, a sales presentation, your sales presentation needs to match the customer's needs. I've talked about it countless times. Sell like a doctor, sell like a doctor. You must go through your presentation focusing on what it is that your customer right in front of you needs right now. And a script simply won't do it. On Storm, I've broken it down to kind of seven different scenarios. For retail, there's usually three or four. And the reason I say three or four is, well, I'll get into that. But in a nutshell, I need to replace my roof now because there's an active problem. I'm budgeting for the future. You know, the, the tire kicker three to five years out, they want a cosmetic upgrade or the last one is usually related to some sort of uh, real estate transaction, buying or selling their house. So that's the four, but real estate's a little less common. So how do we customize our presentation to our customer? How do we follow the exact same format for storm and retail and make it simple and easy to follow? By the way, if you do end up in that program, which no pressure whatsoever, I do back this, by the way, with 100% money back guarantee. You have 30 days to try it. Put it to the test, let me know. If you have issues, I take care of you. I have a reference sheet. This reference sheet does not sound salesy. Anyone can follow it. Your customers can see it. You do this a few times, you won't even need it. So let's get back to this car park formula. This comes together beautifully. And what I'm gonna show you is going to cover the foundations of closing. Because guess what, most people, <laughs> spoiler alert, the P stands for present or pitch. Most people believe that closing is pitching and the A is asking for the business. What comes first is more important. This is a claim that many people are gonna argue with me on. And that's okay, if you disagree, that's fine. The reason I say that this part is more important is this. If your friend, you've got a good friend in your life, he or she does something to, to upset you, you give them more grace than if a stranger did. If a stranger does something wrong to you, they make you feel not great, they diss you, you, you you'll flip them off and say, hey, I don't need you in my life, I'm done. But if a friend does, anything that might rub you the wrong way, you might be upset, but you're more forgiving and you're willing to forgive. So think of this as the foundation of friendship, so to speak, with your soon-to-be customer. You're gonna see how we build this rapport to tee up and get permission to present, which by the way, in this presentation, also spoiler alert, you're gonna be overcoming the biggest objections straight out of the gate before you actually get into your presentation and go through your contract or your contingency. And for Storm, you know what that is, it's the deductible and price. Retail, strictly price. I'm gonna show you how to overcome those in the program. All right, let's jump in. 
right now, I'm gonna be showing you how, what each of these letters stands for and how to string it together because formulas are powerful. They're easy reference points that allow us to take information in front of us and customize it. Just the same as the slap canvassing formula. People that are using it would tell me, Adam, I used to knock 100 doors. Now I can get between 10 and 20 for an inspection. It's changed the game. If you go through YouTube comments in the video, you're gonna see galore. <laughs> I have uh, email testimonials out the nose from people saying, I use the slap formula, it's easy to follow. I keep hearing the word simple. I've, it, it's just simple, and yes, that is exactly what the car park formula is. I, I've worked on this for years to simplify it. How can I create an easy plan that anyone can follow, even a seasoned pro will refine their skills? And I just presented this to a sales team of about 50. There are seasoned guys doing multi-million in sales who learn something from this, who are applying the stuff in the field to see results. So let's jump right in. I'm gonna use purple. We're gonna go through these one by one. C of car park closing strategy, my formula. C stands for connect, okay? People do business with who? People, not businesses. They do business with people, people who they know, people who they like, people who they trust. So many salespeople make this mistake of showing up for an appointment or generating their lead and shooting straight in for business. No one likes it, it's not fun, it's forceful. You need to slow down, pump the brakes a little bit. Guess what, fun fact, this is a true story. Between 83 and 87% of a buying decision is made before a company calls you. So if you have an inbound lead, 83 to 87% of that decision's been made. They've already done some research, they already know they're going to buy the product, and they've already vetted your company. So how long do you have to make a first impression? Seven seconds, right? So think of this. Your first seven seconds of your encounter with that customer are either going to reinforce this buying decision or kill it. If you mess up out of the gate, if you don't have people love you right away, you are destroying your chances. This doesn't go up. It really only goes down by mistakes. It's like my first business I started, I was 16. It was a mobile car detailing business. Let me tell you, you don't want people to notice your work. If they notice something, that means you missed it. That's a mistake, and the same applies here. The buying decision's already made. You're either gonna reinforce it or you're gonna destroy it. So when we connect with our customer, we compliment them. We spend some time to build rapport. We treat them like a human and like a friend. I have a three-part formula that I teach to do that, which I don't have time to get into in this video, but I just want you to remember, pump the brakes, connect, compliment, receive gifts, be a good human, all right? Don't jump straight into business, warm up a little bit, have some small talk. This is building rapport because it's the foundation that if you get these next two right, your presentation, even if you botch it, even if you hiccup or stumble, it will be smoothed over just like a friend you're gonna be more forgiving with than a stranger. So that's our C for connect. What happens next? We assess A, where they are at. I'm gonna go through this high level. I've done multiple videos on these. For storm, where are they in the claims process? No claim, partial payment, denial, or paid in full. Each one of these scenarios has about two, minus the paid in full. So there's really seven kind of different mindsets that the customer is in. So seven mindsets for retail, and I told you there's about four for, excuse me, uh, for storm, my bad. Seven for storm and four for uh, four mindsets for retail. And again, um, let's just breeze through these really quick. This is gonna come in to your presentation. You're gonna customize your presentation on the fly by selling like a doctor, diagnosing exactly where that customer is at, and then customizing your presentation to suit their exact needs. And you'll do that by assessing where they are. So the seven mindsets for storm, no claim. What damage are you talking about? Or, hey, we had a storm, how bad is the damage? Those are two. Partial payment, hey, the insurance company paid to repair a few shingles and this and that, can you do it for this cost? Scenario two. Hey, the insurance company's only paying for partial payment, but my roofs, my neighbors got roofs and I'm mad, I need a full roof. Okay, so there's two different mindsets. Denial, my insurance was out and you know what, it's okay. I believe then they said we're fine. Denial, <laughs> option two. My insurance is out, they did not my roof but five of my neighbors got roofs and they're raising a pitchfork, okay? Or paid in full, show me an estimate. So those are the seven different mindsets that your customer could be in. Retail, hey, 
I need help right now. I have an active leak. My, my ceiling is stained. My carpet's ruined. Grandma's couch is all destroyed. Help, 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 right? Or, hey, you know what? We're just looking for estimates. I got to replace the roof in five years. Just trying to do some budgetary planning. Or, hey, I want to really upgrade my roof. We're going to re redo the outside of the house. We want it to look nice. And then the last one, the fourth one is, hey, we're moving or some time sensitive piece is coming up. We're moving. They're selling the house. We're buying a house, whatever it is. So these are the different mindsets that we must appeal our presentation to. Another reason that word for word scripts, they're a good teaching tool, but they are not application. And the difference here, what you're learning on this channel and in my products, they are actual usable strategies in the field. It's not training. Yes, you have to get trained up on the philosophy, but they are systems and strategies start to finish that you can plug and play in the real world to see results. So again, we're going to ask after we connect and build rapport. Hey, so simple. Where are you at in the process? What made you want to call us? Why are you looking for a new roof? Whatever the case may be, we're going to assess where they're at. Write it down because it's going to come into our presentation later. So follow and write along. We've connected and built rapport. We've assessed where they are and we've noted it so we can bring this up later. Now it's time for us to jump up on the roof before I write the R. We do our inspection at the assessment phase. You may have already done this, by the way, it was a self-generated lead at the door. So let's pretend, pretend it's a lead. If you've already done it, that's okay, but you're not gonna move on to the next section for R, which stands for report until after you have done your inspection. And hopefully while you're up there, you found a few other things, a few other reasons, the big reasons for them to take action on the roof. Defects, um, failings, failure spots, existing areas of concern, things like this. All right, by the way, um, there's more to each of these, way more. And in my program, I break down specific topics and talking points that are different for storm and retail, so you can review those should you choose to jump into that program. R stands for report. This is when we show our findings, but before we do, we frame what we are about to say. Listen, I wear glasses, I don't wear them on camera because they glare. When I wear glasses, I see things differently. Literally, I'm seeing them through the frames that I'm looking through. Just like your customers are going to view what you have to say when you put parameters and explain it. If I asked you to taste this glass of wine, for example, I don't even drink, and you're just like, okay, great, I poured you a glass of wine. But if I create this big elaborate story that this wine was from a special vineyard in California that's been in business for 100 years and they only do 50 cases per, per year and, and the bottles are 500 bucks a piece. All of a sudden you're looking to taste that wine. You're thinking, man, it's going to be good and it's special. And it will impact your experience because it's a different frame. So we frame what it is we're going to show them because a homeowner doesn't give two diddlies about a stinking, uh, you know, like a, a shingle. I, I don't know. I don't have any context on a shingle picture. So we explain what is storm damage? Why is it covered? We explain in retail what the issue is, what issues they're concerned about, how this can help them. We frame everything before showing them the pictures to create the context and to put their glasses on for them on how, they, how we want them to see this information. And here and only here do we show our findings afterwards and explain, again with framing, why insurance is going to cover this damage. So we want to get that out of the way first before explaining the damage. Here's the damage. Here's why it's covered. Then let's go into showing you what your roof looks like so they can be the judge. All right. You'll notice that through this process, I'm doing a lot of giving the homeowner control and feeling freedom of choice and empowering them. And when they do, they're going to choose you. If you push it, they will not. All right. So I'm going to give them the right lens, then show them the photo. Then I'm going to ask if they want to see how I can help. All right. Now, one thing which I'm going to rewind for a minute on the report. It's important to get invited to the kitchen table before you do this. You simply ask when you get off the ladder before you go to this report. Hey, where's a good spot for us to sit down and review this stuff? So we're out of the sun. It puts the customer at ease. You walk side by side, they invite you into the house or the kitchen table, the power dynamic changes. It is a subtle but incredibly powerful shift and it's essentially a way to get invited into the kitchen table without them even realizing that you essentially asked. It's incredibly powerful. So we've connected with them. We've built rapport. We've assessed where they're at. We've done our inspection. We've said, hey, where can we review this? We get invited to the kitchen table. We frame it. We give them the report. Now, oops, we are on to the P of presentation. This is the longest part of my program, the complete closing strategy. There's a link in the description. Again, it's released today. Um, you'll get a discount, 100% 30 day money back guarantee. Go take a peek if you're interested. All right, let's continue. P, 
P stands for present or pitch, okay? People call it pitch, present, either way, same concept. It is in here that we follow my seven part formula of nailing the right presentation and we grab the area of our assessment whoop, and we plug it in to customize. So the first two are always the same, the first three actually. Then number four is where we customize everything and then the rest is the same. So we know for Stormer Retail, it's virtually the same presentation, believe it or not, for the bones of it. Then we custom tailor the assessment by plugging it in and customizing the presentation to the customer's needs. If it's storm, excuse me, if it's storm, we're going to speak to where they are at in the process and then explain everything from color selection to final invoicing. If it's retail, we talk about their problem and identifying it, our diagnosis, then how we can solve it, then the process start to finish. So we go through this and again, there's those seven different scenarios. We must customize this presentation. Yes, you can do it as a talk track. However, if you want to take it to the next level, this presentation is like the packaging on your roof, and I've used this example before. One chocolate bar and another chocolate bar at checkout at a grocery store may be identical, but the one in gold foil and fancy wrapping can sell for twice as much. Your presentation is the packaging on your roof, so to speak. So if you're using tools, cool tools like Sumo Quote, which I am not affiliated with, um, or if you're doing PowerPoint or Google Slides or even a three ring binder for the majority of it, it will take you to the next level and make you look like a true professional, all right? So so nail this presentation, you're going through the process, customizing it to their needs, explaining why they're going to choose you, walking them through it, and overcoming your objections as you go using my formula, A-R-O, acknowledge, reassure, and overcome, which I've taught in multiple other videos. The right way to overcome objections is not to say the right thing forcefully. It's to first acknowledge what they had to say, reassure them that they're normal, and then frame and overcome. Give them a new lens to see things through. All right, so then we're going to present. And again, in the program, I show you the differences for both storm and retail side by side. You can watch both. You can pick and choose if you only do one or the other. Now, at the end of the present part is where we show either our retail pricing or our contingency. Before we do, we tee it up, we frame it. You're gonna see me in the program framing everything. We're gonna frame how we want them to see it first. Hey, before I show you uh, this paperwork, or before we go through this paperwork, I just want you to know exactly what it says. And then I explain the key points before showing it to them. So I'm gonna frame everything so they see it with the right lens and they don't freak out seeing like nine point font and seven pages like they're signing their house away. <gasps> People freak out. So we present. Now, most people think this is it. Present and ask. That's closing. Uh -uh. We've built a strong foundation. We've connected. We've assessed exactly where they at, are at. We've given them the right lens to look at our report and view the information that we're showing them. We've asked to be invited to the kitchen table and we've presented. And the one thing that I forgot, the big thing that I just forgot <laughs> that I need to go back on, on your P is a key point of present is to overcome the biggest objections out of the gate. Okay? before they even come up. Now I call this squashing them because overcoming is one thing, right? It's like so usually you overcome when you're challenged with it. Hey, I'm, you know, your price is higher. But when you squash these objections before they even come up, everything changes because that nagging question in the back of their mind has been quieted, it's been appealed to. So I start both of my presentations with saying, you can choose anyone for this process and here's why for both storm and retail. I go into assessment, not price. I've done a video on that. My goal is to break their emotional attachment to money on retail. Apples to apples estimates, they're, they're often apples to oranges or apples to strawberries. They're not the same, there's no line items. So I break their conceptual ideas about their main concerns, the deductible. Here's why you can choose anyone. Assessment, price. Okay, versus price. I'm not concerned about price, I'm concerned about the assessment. The deductible, I explain the legal sides, I overcome that. I've done many videos on that, by the way, that you can take a peek at. On retail, I explain that not all estimates are the same. And I say, hey, if you're, and I even tell them out of the gate, you'll see this in the program, if you're looking to only purchase a roof on price, I'm not your, I'm not your person, period. I'm not willing to cut corners to win your business. Much more on that. I've done in other videos on the channel for free and you'll see plenty in the program should you choose to go in there. But the idea is to start your presentation with, hey, before I go through, go through this, I just want you to know you can choose anyone. Now you and I both know that, but you give them choice. Giving people choice is the illusion of control. They will choose you. So you overcome these huge objections before you even get into it. This here is the biggest game changer on my presentation style that I've seen. 
All right. Now that I've rewound the beginning of the presentation, as a reminder, we overcome these objections. We customize the presentation of how we can help. We explain the process start to finish. Cool? Cool. All right. Now comes to asking for the business. And this is not as simple as you would think. Now, let me take a step back. It is simple. It's not what you're thinking. Simple is everything that I do. When I say it's not as simple as you think, it's not just, hey, what do you think? Are you comfortable working with us? We need to warm up to asking for the business. There's three key questions that I like you to ask. Drawing out all the questions first. That's your first step of asking, making sure they don't have other questions. Because I'll tell you, if you ask for the business too soon and their questions aren't answered or they have other stuff going, they're not ready for it and they will say no or they'll say I have to think about it. Many times they don't even know what the question is. So you need to continually draw these out then we go into a powerful close to find out what it is they're looking for and we spin their own answer again customizing it to use a strong close to fulfill their greatest wishes and desires the if then close which i've taught okay so this is asking for the business. We knock out any future objections. We find out what's most important to them. And then we use a powerful close saying, hey, this is most important to you. If I can satisfy that, would you be willing to work with me? So then we get the autograph. I don't say signature. We get the autograph and we move forward. This is where we win the business. But again, we, we warm up. You'll notice that with each of these are transitions. We build our rapport by connecting. We then assess the damage, transition to the roof. Once we get off, we get invited to the kitchen table. Where can we review these findings out of the sun? Before we uh, present, we're going to ask, would you like to hear how I can help? So we get permission. Then we knock down any objections by asking more questions getting their questions to come out. And then we close with a powerful question. All right, so that's all the way through ask. Now that brings us to R, which is referrals. And this is something that we must do right away. Almost every single sales training I run, I ask, raise your hand with a number of fingers showing me how many uh, referrals you've asked for this week. And I see, I see that a lot, or one, okay? so. People know we should ask for referrals. There's three ways, getting the neighbor's names, introducing the referral program, and, some, and the insurance agent side of things, which I teach, by the way, in the complete sales strategy. These go hand in hand. The sales strategy helps you generate new business, turn one sale into many, gives you a systematic strategy, step-by-step step to follow to crack open a new neighborhood and snowball that one sale into many by leveraging those key touch points. New customer, job scheduled, day of install, install complete and paid in full. Each one of these is an opportunity to go from cold, which is just being in a neighborhood no one knows you, to warm, meaning starting easy conversations using the SLAP formula, using direct mail, letter leave behinds, referral programs, insurance agents, and so forth and then getting hot leads sent to you from insurance agents and referrals. That's the whole idea. Once you get those appointments, the car park closing formula is how you close those deals, all right? So we ask for referrals, and then K is kickstarting a five-star worthy relationship. This is where you get reviews, you express your commitment to provide that service. You must plant the seed now so they're willing to later, okay? And then I show you kind of how to leave the, the breadcrumb, so to speak, of leading people to wanting to contact, excuse me, of leading people to what's gonna happen next. So at the end, they want to leave you a review. People wanna know what happens next. Everybody wants to know what happens next. And I use this example multiple times about knee surgery. Knee surgery is a great example. If you had knee surgery, you wanna know everything. How are they gonna cut you open? What's it gonna look like? What are they reattaching? Is there hardware? Is there not hardware? What's your recovery like? How much pain will you be in? How long will your recovery be? Are you doing physical therapy? Will that be painful? How long will it last? So when all of these things are explained, hey, here's what happens next. This is the next person who'll be calling you. Here's when we'll be scheduling. Here's when you're gonna hear from me. So we want to set up our relationship for success. Believe me, this is gonna help you sleep better at night. I, I used to wake up at like three, four in the morning with my mind racing about customers. I need to do this, I need to do that. I'm concerned about this, I got a call, I freaked out, a window screen broke. This is where we set those expectations and manage them so we don't fall into the, the mistake of kind of over, uh, over promising and under delivering. We in fact wanna under promise and over deliver. So this is where we set that relationship up. So when we string this all together, I wanna to do a quick review here and then give you guys a path to go deeper with this should you choose. Car park, this is a formula, a talk track with a printable cheat sheet that you can bring in the field. Customers can even see this. I wouldn't show it to them, but if they see it, nothing on here screams he's selling me or she's selling me, all right? 
With this formula for both storm and retail, you're gonna connect with your soon to be customers because you're either going to reinforce their high buying decision or you're gonna kill it. People buy from people they know, like, and trust. And we're gonna assess where they're at so we can later customize that aspect of our presentation. We're gonna do our inspection, show our findings, and then report those findings, get our invitation to the kitchen table. Hey, where can we sit down and review this so we're out of the sun? I'll show you what I find. We're gonna frame the lens in which we want them to see our findings, and then we're going to slide into the presentation only after asking, would you like to hear how I can help? We overcome our biggest objections straight out of the gate by letting them know they can choose anyone. We slide into the other six pieces. We customize the presentation and explain the process. Then we ask for the business. We squash any additional questions that are there. We ask them questions and use their answers for our close. See how everything's customized? Giving them control and freedom and choice. And they like you, so they choose with you. When they agree to do business, we rock and roll. We ask for those referrals. We kickstart a great relationship. But hey, Adam, what happens if I don't close it? Good question. You set the appointment to show back up. And I mentioned this in my previous video that I did just before this, where if you don't get this thing closed, you simply ask whatever their objection is. Hey, oftentimes I get this. People say they have to think about it, talk with their wife, they're not ready. It's because I didn't give enough information. May I ask what it is you wanted to think about? That'll help me leave you with the information you need to make the best decision for you. Oftentimes they'll tell you and you can overcome it on the spot. Sometimes you might even repeat things because it's a lot of information. Or sometimes you nailed it and they're good. And, and, and you'll close it, and then if they don't, you set the appointment to come back, all right? So, connect, assess, report, present, ask, referrals, kickstart a five-star relationship. You now know the formula. Many of you are gonna take this for Storm and Retail and kick butt. If you wanna take this to the next level, in my program, and I've already gone 26 minutes, 27 minutes on this video, we've barely even scratched the surface. The complete closing strategy is accessible using the link in the description below. There is an option to add on six months of personal one-on-one -on -one support via email from me with vid customized video replies, which you can take a peek at should you be interested. Inside the program, it's broken up with an introductory overview to teach you this model in even a little more detail. And then I do a deep dive into each of these sections. You can reference it on mobile or your uh, tablet, whatever it is that you work from in the field. You'll only need a computer should you wish. There's a few uh, resources on there that are editable documents. You'll need a computer for those, but anything in the field, you you can reference, you can pull up on your phone and watch the C section or the R or the P and you can breeze through them to catch up. But I break it down, overview of the entire model, deep dive into each section with separate videos for storm and retail. You'll learn the three key points that I go to connect that are also on the uh, cheat sheet here. Simple to follow. A, how to run your assessment, a few tips on your inspection, kind of teeing them up to have a, a greater chance of taking action. R is reporting, how I per personally frame the report, the photos for both storm and retail based on what they're doing. Uh, P is the entire uh, process of how I present for both storm and retail, separate sections for both to customize it. Again, those seven different scenarios for storm, four for retail, and, and it's super simple once you actually get the bones of how to match each of those uh, needs of your customer. And then A, asking for the business along with my close. How do I use these questions as the closing tool to ask for the business? And then the referral program. Many of you use this. This ties really nicely into the complete sales strategy if you're using it. Uh, uses the same referral program in there and the insurance agent piece as well. And then kickstarting that relationship and how to set yourself up for those reviews, including some of the resources from the battle pack um, and complete sales strategy in order to get those reviews and build your pipeline. So if you're interested in that, I stand behind what I do. I'm committed to making this program absolutely amazing. And I've had the opportunity to build this after presenting it exclusively to my one-on-one -on -one clients. It's now available on demand at a very affordable rate, even for new reps with 0% financing for six months available through PayPal. If for any reason you don't qualify, email me and I'll see if I can set you up on a, an in-house plan to help out. And um, last thing, everything that I do is backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee. You get in there, go through this, put it to the test. If you don't like it, if it doesn't jive with you, you email me, I refund your money 100%.
It's pretty simple, all right? So thank you for joining me on this video. I hope that the car park closing formula, even if you don't become a customer, even if you don't buy it, you have the actual formula to use in the field and to start putting this together. My goal is for you to take action, use this information, even a little gems you've grabbed here and there to help increase your close rate so you can close even more sales, make even more money, and create even more opportunities for yourself, your family, your loved ones, and change your life, have fun doing it, and have better relationships with your customers. That's what it's all about. It's a win, 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 and I cannot wait to hear about your success. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, email me, adam at roofstrategist.com. There's links to everything in the video description below, and I will see you on the next one.